So today we take a turn. A turn from the journey that we've been on together over the past several weeks. If you can think back, uh, during Lent we went through a series together called Remember. We remembered why, we remembered who, we remembered to give thanks, we remembered forgiveness, and we remembered that Jesus is near, and we remembered that because of Jesus, we win. And and we celebrated Easter, and it was pretty fantastic. It was an an Easter service to remember for probably a lot of different uh, uh, reasons, with the confetti cannons and the and the party horns and favors and, and all those kinds of things. And we really celebrated as Easter should be celebrated, uh, not just one day, but, but every day. And then we, then we backtracked a little bit to, to talk about those doubts that creep in and try to overtake and maybe, maybe silence our Easter joy that we have uh, in in Jesus, and and uh, tried to figure out um, and give some strategies on how to beat those back, so we can go from from those uh, moments and times of of saying I doubt it to to saying boldly and confidently I believe. And then last Sunday we. We tried to figure out the uh, uh, ascension and, and why the ascension of Jesus was so important. We talked about how uh, if Jesus doesn't ascend into heaven, then, then we don't receive the promised Holy Spirit, this comforter, this counselor that, that Jesus said that he was going to send. Uh, send. And, and also now, was, since Jesus has ascended uh, bodily into heaven, we have a Savior and King who rules everything, the universe for our good and is present with us everywhere. So what does it all mean? Well, as we, as we look back at where we've been over the course of these last several months, you can kind of maybe start to notice something that in those few weeks and months we we focused a lot about a lot on our our personal uh, relationship with Jesus. We did a lot of reflecting on that. We did a lot of the examining uh, the, the the facts, and I guess uh, growing in our relationship up with God, and perhaps maybe also with one another. Well, today, as I said, we. Uh, we take the turn. I mean, that's all great. We need that. But today we have to take the turn because today it's time to turn from examination and uh, reflection on this awesome gift of Jesus that we have in all of the gifts that are ours in abundance and now to move to action, to put those to use. as we follow Jesus. And on this day of Pentecost, we see that in the disciples on that day. We see them moving from being with Jesus, interacting with him, reflecting and examining what Jesus did and said and trying to figure things out to now they move. Let's take a look at this video to remind us of that Pentecost story on that very first day. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then, what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem, and when they heard the loud noise, everyone came running. They were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. 
They were completely amazed. How can this be? They exclaimed. These people are all from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages. And we all hear these people speaking in our own languages about the wonderful things God has done. They stood there, amazed and perplexed. What can this mean? They asked each other. But others in the crowd ridiculed them, saying, "They're just drunk. That's all." Then Peter stepped forward with the eleven other apostles and shouted to the crowd, "Listen, listen carefully, all of you fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem. Make no mistake about this: these people are not drunk, as some of you are assuming. Nine o'clock in the morning is much too early for that. No, what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel." In the last days, God says, "I will pour out my Spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my Spirit even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. And I will cause wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood." And fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will become dark, and the moon will turn blood red before that great and glorious day of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. On that day, the disciples start to live out, put into action that victory that was theirs in Jesus. They they started doing things that they they never expected to do, like like speak another language that they had no training in. But yet, the Holy Spirit gave them that ability to speak about not themselves, but but about about Jesus and what God had done through Him. For the world, and and over a short period of time, that group of uh, of twelve expanded to to thousands, and 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 people were were living in the spirit. They were living in victory. They. They cared for one another, shared with one another. They were celebrating that victory that was theirs in Jesus. They were experiencing each and every day the power of the Holy Spirit living in them and working through them. And so today, maybe what I'm about to say next is going to be shocking to you. I don't know, but here it is. You and I have that same power. We do. We have that victory through faith that God gives us in Jesus. Victory over sin and death and Satan himself. And that Power of the Holy Spirit lives in you and in me, working through His powerful Word of the Bible. That Word that was for a lot of us joined with simple water in our baptism, and God made us a part of His family forever, assuring us of a lifetime of forgiveness. And peace, grace, victory, and power. So, what do we do with it? Do we just come here on Sunday and we sit there and kind of bask in that glow of the tongues of fire and the Holy Spirit and go, "Ooh, show that video again." No, we're called to action. We're called to follow where the Spirit is working in the places that we live, work, and play. 
and through God's word discern just where that is. It's not the same for every one of us. It's the beauty of it all because God has created us so unique and and different and given us all different kinds of gifts and, and different relationships and different places and different professions and all kinds of things that we get to join in where the Spirit is working in the lives of others as He works in and through us. I get excited about that. And hopefully after today, if you're maybe just moderately excited or a little bit excited, or maybe not at all, you'll move a little bit up on the spectrum, okay? That's my prayer today, that you would be moved to action. I mean, for example, I know you're all wondering, when's he going to use that thing, right? Here's the opportunity. And after using this, I think I might get one of these. Good Father's Day present. Thank you, Tim Mall. Let's say that uh, this big bowl is the church and the little uh, orange golf balls are the people of the church. Now, are we just sit there, that just, well, that looks nice. I mean, it's a nice bowl, nice orangey golf balls kind of make us remember the Pentecost fire, you know, sitting there. That's nice. It's boring after a while, doesn't it? What if the Spirit is moving in these people of the church? Woo! The church moves as well as the people. Some are close, some are far. Look at this. Woo! Some even get moved way over there and around and literally are on a roll. I couldn't pass that up. As the Spirit moves people to action, to to get invested in the lives of other people, to not just come and sit here and be in this place in on on Sunday morning, which is a part of it, but it isn't the be all the end all. The Spirit sends us from this place. The Spirit sends us into the lives of others because we have a great story to share. Now, you may think, well, my story's pretty boring. (laughs) Or I'm pretty much an introvert. I don't like to talk to many people. Or maybe you say, well, I'm an extrovert, and some people probably, they run away from me because I talk too much. So what? God works in and through everyone by the power of His Spirit. Maybe you think, well, my story is kind of dark. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with my story myself. The Holy Spirit is going to work in and through your story to, to heal you, to assure you, and to, to forgive you, and to allow you to accept and believe in that forgiveness for yourself so that perhaps maybe some way, somehow, in some connection with someone else that you would be a blessing to someone who maybe is struggling just like you. And in that, the Holy Spirit will draw that person closer to Jesus. We talked about it in our, our morning Bible study this morning that God doesn't waste anything. He's, he's working in all of it, all of us. moves us to action. Well, maybe you'll ask or say, well, uh, I don't know. I can't do all that God stuff. Um, I didn't go to seminary. I don't know my Bible that well. Uh, I don't have the, the right clothes. I don't own a Hawaiian shirt or anything like that. I mean, uh, what will people think of me if I, if I start 
asking them about their, 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 their lives and how things are going, or even if I ask somebody if I can pray with them, I, I don't know. I don't know if I can do that. Let me first affirm for you, I understand that struggle is real. And yet I know that our God is real. And I know that our God has poured out his Holy Spirit on you and me to work in mighty and miraculous ways that we could never even imagine. And you know what? All that stuff that we think is important or has to, has to be the prerequisite before, before the Spirit working in us, none of that matters. It really doesn't. We just need to be who God created us to be. Uh, the Spirit gives us a boldness. We can be bold in living our lives in the Spirit. Put up that next slide. As we remember these three things, okay? Living boldly. First one is this. You're a forgiven child of God. You're made a part of the King's royal family. Don't ever forget your identity is in Him. You are forgiven. You're not perfect on this earth, but you're forgiven. Bearing the image of Jesus. The Spirit works in and through. Number two. Ah, that was pretty good. You're drenched in grace. That God loves you unconditionally. So in those times, maybe you miss an opportunity to connect with someone or oh, I should have said something, but I didn't, or I should have offered prayer, or, or I should have sent them a text. Ugh, don't beat yourself up. I've often said that as Lutherans, we're good at that. Beating ourselves up. Wallowing in our own guilt. Instead of relying and going back in, in the drenched grace of God. Drinking deeply from that fountain. That covers us. Because, you know, in, in the end, you know, God has it all covered. God has bought it all back, redeemed it in Jesus, even our failures. Don't let fear of failure cause you to not step into action. Third, the Holy Spirit does all the work. You and I are just kind of like the conduits, you know, the, the, the pipeline. You know, we get blown or, or sent where he, where he sends us. And we're available, being the people that God's called us to be. We're not responsible for converting anyone. We're not responsible for anyone saying, I believe in Jesus. I, I get that. I, I, I trust in him. That's not our job. Our job is to convey the message. Our job is to be the reflection of Jesus, to be salt and light, a great seasoning, a, a, a bright spot in this world. So remember, we're a forgiven child of God, drenched in grace, and the Holy Spirit does the work. The Holy Spirit's power is behind it all. Don't forget about that power that is very real. In you. And I have one thing that I want to illustrate that with. I need four helpers. Lathan? Okay, Clayton. Ethan? That's all boys. We can't have all boys. We need a girl. Emma, back there. Come on up. Let's see how fast you can run. You can cut down this aisle right here. Right here. Oh. <laughs> the Spirit is moving here. Look at that. This thing right here is called an energy stick. I just I found this this week. It's just amazing. So I almost bought like five of them, but I didn't. But uh, it, what this thing does is that 
it puts out a, a little safe pulse of electricity. It does. And the electricity will move across your skin. (laughs) And when we all hold our hands together and one of us holds onto this end and the other end, an amazing thing happens in here. Now, it won't explode, okay? But an amazing thing happens. Let's come up here so everybody can see. Because that's what electricity is. is It's a flow of electrons. Yeah. Okay, so who wants to hold on to the other end? (laughs) I thought that would be a great question to ask. Okay, so Clayton, you hold Ethan's hand. Join hands. There we go. Join hands all around. You go hold my hand. Are you ready for the flow of electrons? Oh. All right, can you reach that high? Let go. Again. Don't cover up the noise. That's the best part. Do that. There we go. Do you feel anything? No? I don't. Let go. Let go. See? Oh, yeah. Okay, hold the hand again. There you go. Okay, now everybody stop holding hands. Amazing. Here you go, bad. Thank you for your help. Now, the whole point of that was to demonstrate with the use of God's gift of electricity that even though they didn't see it, the electrons are moving across their skin and through them. And that's what activated the sound and the light, right? You didn't see it, though, in them. But the Holy Spirit, you see, that's kind of the way it is with the Holy Spirit of God. It, 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 it is, it's living in us. And that power is demonstrated as we join hands together and take action into the world that God has placed us in. In Second Timothy one seven says this for, for God didn't give us a spirit that makes us weak and fearful. He gave us a spirit that gives us power and love. It helps us to control ourselves. The spirit, that power that is within us, drives out all the all the uh, excuses or, or or the questions or the barriers that we put up, uh, the 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 what ifs or the but I can'ts so that we trust in the Spirit's power to take action. To take action. You know, some examples of what this looks like, this living boldly in the power of the Spirit is evident in in some really remarkable people. People that are living in that confidence that the Spirit gives, to that power that the Spirit brings that's very real and working. I mean, the obvious example is those 12 disciples. They were never the same in a good way. They go from being holed up and hiding in a room after Jesus' uh, resurrection to on the day of Pentecost, speaking in all these different languages, telling of the wonders of God that he's done for people in Jesus. And they go out from that place and they continue to do that. And they live in that confidence and that power. So much so that they are willing to accept the consequences, whatever it may be, as they speak about Jesus. Because they know that this world is not their real home. Their real home is in heaven. Another example is... uh, Johnny Erickson Tata. Paralyzed by a swimming accident when she was 17, God's Spirit works mightily in power to work through her to connect to other people all across the world through her testimony. And in fact, she would even go far, so far as to say that, that if she had the opportunity to be 
healed, you know, like Jesus did with the paralytic in the Bible? She said, I don't think I'd want that. Because God's message speaks so powerfully through me in my condition that I am. Amazing stuff. Normal people don't say that. That's so countercultural. But she lives in the power and confidence of the Spirit. One other one. Our good friend, Gary Teese. I mean, Gary uh, was a banker from Iowa who quit his job at the bank to be a full-time, one who goes around full-time to uh, gather and garner support financially and prayerfully for missionaries all over the world. And God has has blessed that. He isn't uh, a seminary-trained pastor, just an ordinary guy who has the power of the Holy Spirit living in him and working through him. And he brings that message to people every single Sunday somewhere in the United States. I used Gary's famous phrase just a few moments ago. That's not normal. So what will it look like for you? You are filled with the Holy Spirit too. God can and will use you and deliver through you all the power of His Holy Spirit. Look where it is that that He is working in your life or in the lives of others. You know, maybe you have somebody that comes to you and says, gosh, I'm really struggling with this right now. I would say that that's an opportunity to come alongside them. You don't have to solve their problem for them. But you could help them process it. And I would say that's the Spirit saying, here's where I'm working. Here's an opportunity for you to to give witness to Jesus. Maybe not right away, maybe as the conversation moves along. But see, be available. Be available. God, who knows what God will do. He's going to do amazing things for you. You just have to be available again. God right now is working through a dad to calm his child, right? Yeah. My friends in Jesus, I want you to be aware today of the presence of the Holy Spirit among you and in you. We sang a few moments ago a great song. Lord, make me aware of your presence. I think we overlook that a lot today. Because we come up with a lot of ifs, ands, and buts. And because of that, I think it maybe is time for us to to look at that big but video again. You know what I'm talking about? Now, I'm not referring to the part of your body. But it's kind of a play on that word. So let's take a look at this, just to be reminded. I got a, got a big butt. It's gigantic, if I'm going to be blunt about it. And you know what? The funny thing is, I got several big butts. And, and, and before, you, before you discard me or, or wince at the disgusting notion of that, I'm going to go out on a limb here and suggest that possibly you have at least one big butt as well. Yeah, you like that? Hurts a little, huh? Let me tell you something. Let me just tell you something, okay? Everybody we know has a big butt. And more often than not, it's the thing that actually gets in the way of us living a consistent life for Jesus. I think you know what I'm talking about. But I'm going to expound a little bit, okay? See if you can recognize some of these butts. But I have to work more. But my favorite TV show is on. But my kids have practice. But i got to tweet something. But it's such a beautiful day. But I'm just not in the mood. But I deserve a break today. You see... Everything kind of interferes with my life of, of just living an authentic life for God, okay? And more often than not, it always has something to do with some sort of butt, okay? Even the littlest of butt can distract me. It really can. The littlest butt can make me think, well, oh, I'm not going to pray today. I'm not going to think about it today. I'm not going to deny myself. I'm not going to read the Bible, blah, blah, blah. Whatever God asks me to do, I seem to have a butt for it and get away, okay? And the most horrendously big butt of all time is the butt that gets in the way of me just hanging out with God and reading His Word. It's true. Think about it. All the times you're about to open that, and all of a sudden, a big giant butt gets in the way. A butt. 
much like one of these. But I got a farm bill, but I'm tired, but the game's over, but I read last Tuesday, but I gotta check Facebook, but I don't like Leviticus, but it's too hot in here, but I, I just don't like books, but I don't understand it, but it's boring, but what does that have to do with me in the 21st century? Those are some ugly butts, people. Let's just call them what they are, ugly, ugly butts. Okay, and there's a lot more to them, sad but true. Here's a list, although not exhaustive, of some of the most popular butts known to mankind. But I don't have enough money yet. But others will think that I'm a nerd if I carry the Bible. But they won't like me if I talk about Jesus. But I don't know if God will do what I ask. But I just can't get motivated. But I'm afraid. But I don't have all the answers. But the small group is the same night as Monday Night Football. But can I just let my life speak for itself? But I'm not happy. But that's not my gift. But that's the pastor's job. But I don't know how to pray. But I can't believe that. But I don't know where to start. But everybody else is having fun. Butts abound, friends. But, 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 but. Here a but, there a but. Everywhere a but, but. Okay? And, and, and the most overused but of all time, but I just don't have enough time. Really? Oh, come on. We have a lot of buts. God has given us a real simple word. Okay? If we learn it, and we share it, and we teach it, and we live by it, then see, God gets glorified, people benefit, and then we get blessed. That's why we do what we do. That's the why behind the butt. Okay? And ultimately, that's the whole point I'm trying to make here, my fellow butt lovers, is if your butt is bigger than your why, then your butt's too big. Okay, it's time to, metaphorically speaking, snap into a Slim Jim. Okay, let's slap on some spiritual shape-ups and hit the road a little bit so we can just manage the butts a little bit. That's all we're trying to do. That's what we're talking about. Let's minimize the excuses. Let's shrink the butts. Shrink the butts. Say it with me. Shrink the butts. That's what we need to do. And you and I can do that together. We can conquer this. You and I can do it. We start the day, okay? I know we can. Let's just do it. No ifs, ands, or... Yeah. I think you get it. You might be talking about that one at the supper table tonight. Shrinking the butts. The power of the Holy Spirit living in you and me, they can be shrunk. They can be eliminated. So that God can be honored. And that people can be connected to what it looks like to live victoriously in Jesus. So over the next few weeks, that's what we're going to do. And so I have a challenge for you uh, this week is, uh, first of all, number one, watch for opportunities that the Holy Spirit places before you to take action this week, okay? And as you're faced with that, as the butts start to get bigger, rely on the power of the Holy Spirit and engage in action. Number two, don't forget this that you're not in it alone. So you th- saw the graphic that we had. It looked like the, the peace sign. We're going to call that the V sign for victory in Jesus. So throw somebody the, the, the V sign that you see from the rock to remind you that you're in this all together. You're not alone. And most importantly, that the Spirit is in you, right, to encourage you. So if you see somebody from the rock this week out and around, Throw them the V. Now, if you get thrown the V, what should you do back? Throw it right back, right? You know, you go like this. Throw the V for the victory. You're not in it alone. Maybe give them a smile while you're at it, too. I can't wait to see what God does in and through us as we live victoriously, not just through this series in our journey together this side of heaven. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you that you have given us victory in Jesus and have given us a a map, a, a blueprint of what it looks like to live that way. Lord, we know that the struggles continue in this world that has been corrupted by sin, but you are one person at a time buying it back, your world. Looking forward to that day when Jesus returns. Work in and through us powerfully and boldly and mightily this week and in the days ahead as we be your instruments in connecting people with Jesus by the Spirit's power. This we pray in the strong and precious name of Jesus. Amen.